my name is Becky Hall. I'm the executive director here at the Nevada Science Center. I'm here with our director of research, Dr. Josh Bondi. So today he'll be talking a little bit about combat theories, and I'll let him talk about those. Um, but I do want to say a little bit about the Nevada Science Center. So we are located um, in downtown Henderson, Nevada, so that's southern Nevada, um, U.S. And we have a little science center in our lab here where we do our research. So me and Dr. Bodney go across the state uh, finding different fossils from different time periods um, from all corners of the state. So here for Fossil, uh, Fossil Friday, we're gonna feature a certain project we're working on or maybe something that's really cool going on in um, our research or in Nevada. So today, like I said, we're gonna be talking about gompa theories. So what are gompa theories? And I'll let Dr. Bonnie take care of that. Thank you, Becky. So yeah, to talk about gompa theories. So many of you probably have never even heard of such a thing, but I think this is a group of animals which doesn't really get the credit they deserve. So gompa theories are actually cousins of elephants and mastodons. So many of us know who, who elephants are, obviously. There's still the living Asian elephants, living African elephants. And then their cousins, the mammoths, are all elephants, true elephants. And then mastodons, a lot more of you, your fossil fans, are aware of. And so they lived here in North America from about 23 million years ago, all the way through the Ice Ages. And here in Nevada, the last uh, true mastodon that we know of came from Elko County, in the far northeastern part of the state, and is on exhibit at the Northeastern Museum in Elko. Uh, but this other group of elephants that I want to talk about today, the gomphotheres, I mean, they're the most successful group of elephants in the entire history of the elephant lineage. And elephants actually have a really diverse history uh, spanning the globe, with the exception of Antarctica and Australia. And gomphotheres are the only group of elephants that ever made it down into South America. So globally, they actually were the most widespread group of, of elephant-like animals. So I'm going to show you uh, an illustration just to show how they're related uh, from Kirk Johnson and Ray Troll's great book, uh, Cruise in the Fossil Coastline. So if you open it up to uh, Ray's amazing diagram here of the elephant family tree. So here we have the basal elephants. And then coming up, we see mastodons break off early in the evolution of elephants. And then next are the gomphotheres. So gomphotheres kind of break off down here. And then the true elephants continue on uh, into the present. So gomphotheres, maybe the most famous of gomphotheres is Platybelodon. Belladon. I know that's a big name and a lot to chew on. But Platy Belladon is from the, uh, I believe it's from Nebraska and Kansas. And those are the ones that had the big tusks on top. And then they have these really flat shovel tusks on the bottom. So that's probably the most famous of gomphotheres. Gomphotheres uh, stereotypically have four tusks. So this is a diagram or a 3D print that was made by our friend uh, Bernard Means at Virginia Commonwealth University at the Virtual Curation Lab. You can check him out for more 3D images on his page. So two tusks on top two tusks out of the chin. This is the group called Rankitherium. So this is actually based upon a three million year old specimen that was found in Arizona. Gomphotheres in Nevada span from about through the Neogene period. So the Neogene period comprises of the Miocene and the Pliocene epochs. So from about 23 million years ago up until about uh, five million years ago. So, or excuse me, a little bit more recent to about two and a half million years ago. So we have these four tusk weird animals all across Nevada. So gomphotheres have been found in Washoe County, Lyon County, Mineral County, Esmeralda County, and there's little bits and pieces of them from Lincoln County as well. So they kind of had a great basin-wide distribution. So the diff another difference between elephants and gomphotheres and mastodons is the type of their teeth. So this is a mammoth tooth, or a 3D print of a mammoth tooth, again, courtesy of Dr. Means. So see these complex ridges? This is a feature that's only found in mammoths and elephants. Since mammoths are elephants, that makes sense, right? And these are specialized teeth for grinding up grass. And so that's what elephants do and what mammoths do. And then this is a mastodont tooth. And so they kind of have these big bumps on their molars. And they have teeth more like ours. So they're rooted teeth, unlike the elephant teeth. And so if we pan down, This is the jaw of Stegomastodon, which was found from the Miocene of, I think it's Lyon County. And so we can see here the big bumps here. And so these are specialized teeth for browsing. And so this is a period of time in Nevada 
where there's still kind of swampy environments. There's, uh, think of places maybe like uh, the great sequoias of Southern California up in the Sierra Nevada foothills. That's kind of what this environment would have looked like in Nevada during this period of time. So there was lots of lush vegetation. A lot of these animals are found in swampy environments. And so they have perfect teeth for dealing with that environment. Another gothotheres skull that we have here in our lab is, so this is the genus Stigmastodon that I just showed you. So I'll pick up the jaw here. So again, from Lyon County, this is just the bottom part of the jaw. So it would have been like this part right here. Arr, arr. <laughs> and then the long part where, where the tongue would have come out. And these things probably had tusks or had trunks like modern elephants do. Nice. So our other specimen comes from rocks almost the same age as our Sega Mastodon. But here, this is a, I know this just kind of looks like a lump of rock from where, you're, where your perspective is at. And the person that found it, Phil Compton of Southern California, thought that he was taking a picture of a rock when he first found this thing. And then when he was going back to his photographs from his trip to Esmeralda County, he took a closer look at this rock and he noticed that it was a little bit too regular to actually just be a rock. And so he sent it to us and we went and checked it out and we were able to go put together an excavation crew and we went out and we recovered this skull. It is a portion of a skull. I'll bring over. So uh, Aaron Mays, who's a, an amazing photographer at UNLV Special Collections, he went out ahead of us and took a picture of us as we were. I, oh, let me. So this is an area of Esmeralda County called the Sun. And the mountains in the background are the White Inyo Range, which is the highest points in the state of Nevada. And so we're hiking out into the Badlands to go recover this specimen. So if we look here, this is actually upside down. So this is the hard palate here, so the roof of the mouth. This is actually one of these teeth, except it's been worn completely flat, which tells us this is a really old animal. This is the root of another one, of another molar. And if I turn this thing around. These are the tusks in their sockets coming out at you. And we actually have some uh, gomphothere tusk here, so you can kind of see what it looks like close up. This is not from the same specimen. This is from a different specimen, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So these are about 14 million years old, again, from Esmeralda County. And these are environments that were pretty swampy based upon the geology of the area. We see there's lots of carbonized plant material. There's kind of these greenish and purplish layers, which tell us that the soils were really poorly, uh, poorly drained, low oxygen, and facilitated the preservation of bones like this. And one of the really interesting parts about where we're digging in Esmeralda County in these units, and in particular with this specimen that this tusk came from, is that these fossils are so well preserved. So since everybody probably just had their breakfast, depending if you're on the West Coast, if you're somewhere else in the world, maybe you're having dinner or lunch, but this is a fossil maggot. So with collaborator, with me and Becky, along with collaborators, Dr. Michelle Landon from the American Museum of Natural History and Fabian Hardy at University of Michigan, we're currently writing up, these are fossilized maggots that have been turned to quartz before they rotted away. And we actually found them in the skull of the gomphothier. So these little maggots were chewing away on a dead and decomposing gomphothier in a swamp 14 million years ago in Western Nevada. And so stay tuned as we, uh, this thing's almost ready to go out for publication. It's cool stories that we can tell through gomphotheres. Now, I mentioned gomphotheres being the most successful group of elephants. So again, they went, they were in Asia, Europe, North America, and South America. The only continents they didn't make it to were Australia and Antarctica that we're aware of. But these things lived until the very end of the Ice Ages, the end of the Pleistocene in South America. There are actually butcher sites of gomphotheres found in South America. So people were actually hunting these and eating them as well and people actually were able to interact with these animals. Whereas in North America, people were hunting mammoths. In South America, they were hunting gomphotheres. So we just wanted to bring to light uh, some cool research that we're doing on these cool four tusked animals. 
Uh, they're diverse, they have a wide uh, fossil history. And the next time you're talking about elephants, fossil elephants, don't forget the gum fears. I guess we're ready for questions if anybody's got any. Yeah, we actually do have some questions and thank you for letting us know about gomp theories. And uh, this is really interesting stuff. This is super cool. Um, one of the kids wanted to know how old uh, could the gomp theories, like, do they have any idea how old they could get on average? Like lifespan? So, so lifespan, yeah. for the elephant family, we use modern elephants as a reference. So if you get a tooth this flat on this really old individual, uh, it turns out once elephants get big enough, there's really not too many predators that can kill them or hunt them down. And so usually they die of starvation, unfortunately. So once their teeth wear flat like this poor guy, or an elephant runs out of these tooth plates, they usually go to swampy areas to gum their food, and usually they don't get enough food, they end up dying of starvation, which is a horrible story, but they lived a long, happy life until that point. And that's typically around 60 to 65 years. I'm going to start calling you sunshine. That's super depressing. <laughs> All right. uh, we have an awesome question uh, from William. William, you can unmute. You, you had a cool question. Go ahead and unmute and ask whatever. So, hello. I would like to know how many specimen fossils do you have in the center? Uh, so how many, how many gomphotheres specimens do we have in the center? So we have our stegomastodon. We have this gomphotheres specimen, and then we have another individual. So we have a, a minimum number of three individual gomphotheres. Our work in Esmeralda County, we do find bits and pieces of others. So we probably have more than that. But at a minimum, we have three individuals so far. Um, one of the one of the kids wanted to know about what is the size that the gomphotheres could could grow to. That's a great question. So the biggest gomphotheres were probably about the size of Asian elephants, so about 10, 12 feet tall at the shoulder. So we're not talking about Colombian mammoths who are like 18 feet tall at the biggest. So these aren't the biggest of elephants; they're still big animals. But one one really interesting side story about gomphotheres that I didn't really get into is that this old individual that we have here is a member of a species called Gomphotherium minor. So it's a really localized species in far western Nevada that were pygmies. And so these things probably got to about six feet tall. So think of a six foot tall elephant, then kind of cute, right? Except it had a long face and four tusks. You can't just throw pygmy out without telling what pygmy means. Oh, pygmy means miniature. So they were miniature Gomphotheres. That's adorable. <laughs> no way. Um, so <clears throat> as far as like the age, like how long ago do they estimate that they roamed uh, uh, Nevada? In Nevada, we have records of gomphotheres going back from uh, as far back as about 23 million years ago. And then the, the skull, like I just mentioned, even though it's not from Nevada, it's from Arizona, it's about 3 million years ago. So they had a really long, about 20 million year run here in the Great Basin. Did they have any, um, do you guys know about if they had any predators or anything like that? That's a great question. So during the, their evolutionary run, they coexist with giant short-faced bears, which were certainly, those were bears bigger than polar bears, which probably could have brought down a smaller individual. There were bear dogs called orophagines, which is the lineage of, of carnivorous mammals that kind of, it's before bears and dogs split, so they're called bear dogs. Uh, and there's also a number of different groups of cats that uh, evolved to have big saber teeth. So these are all potential predators that could have brought down a uh, gomp spear. Bear dogs. That's the first time I've heard of it. I feel like there's some anthropologists or something getting kind of lazy on us. Just being like, I don't know, just combined them. Um, so we'll have the final student question. One of the kids want to know how fast could, is there any way you could tell how fast these, these could run? Uh, that's a good question to ask. Um, modern elephants, they can't really, they can sprint, but they can't really run for long distances at any speed. And gomphotheres, their body proportions compared to elephants, they're kind of stubby-legged. So they're probably more adapted to going up and down hills rather than running. So my guess is they're not going to be sprinters. They're really not going to be runners either. They're probably just lumbering about the hills uh, doing their business. So. That's a long answer to say, I don't know how fast they could have gone, but it probably wasn't too fast. Yeah, so they didn't they didn't roam around too much. They were kind of stationary, right? Yeah, they're probably hanging around the forest, hanging around swampy environments. 
Okay, that's good. Well, thank you for telling us all about the Gauntlet Theories today. And um, before we uh, sign off, Becky and Josh, can you guys tell us about any future Fossil Friday chats that we have on the horizon? Yes, so we have uh, several dates coming up. Um, you can find them on our website, sciencecenternevada.org, or um, Mr. Rolf Krauss can send it out. But we have a few more Fossil uh, Friday features that we are going to do. And then besides Fossil Fridays, we are going to travel the state of Nevada and bring more of Nevada to everyone across the world. And our next um, stop is going to be Tonopah, Nevada, an historic mining town that has a lot of history of Nevada there. So we're going to visit Tonopah and we hope you can join us on April 1st. <music>